Hello friends. Earlier we have studied homomorphism of groups. Now we shall study isomorphism of groups. So this is the definition of uh, isomorphism of groups. A homomorphism phi from G into G bar is said to be an isomorphism if phi is 1 to 1. For isomorphism, first it must be a homomorphism. And in addition to homomorphism, if the mapping is 1 to 1, then that is called isomorphism. So isomorphism is a stronger relation than homomorphism. Homomorphism may not be 1 to 1, but isomorphism must be 1 to 1 relation. And further, we have defined as uh, two groups G and G asterisks are said to be isomorphic if there is an isomorphism of G onto G asterisk. So here that onto is necessary. Onto is not necessary for isomorphism, but it is necessary for isomorphic groups. And in this case, we say uh, G is isomorphic with G asterisk. So that means if there is one one onto homomorphism, then the two groups are said to be isomorphic. So this is the meaning of uh, isomorphism. Isomorphism is a homomorphism and in addition to that it must be one to one. And uh, now this is a uh, result about isomorphic groups. Isomorphic groups is an equivalence relation. Now what is the equivalence relation? Uh, we know the equivalence relation uh, must satisfy three conditions. That is it must be uh, reflexive, symmetric and transitive. So that means if we have two groups, uh, say first is reflexive, the relation must be reflexive. That is uh, G is isomorphic to G itself. And uh, this is uh, easy to verify by considering the mapping phi of x is equal to x, identity mapping. Then there is uh, this mapping is uh, uh, one to one and this is also onto and this is also homomorphism that we have seen and therefore we can say G is isomorphic with G. Second, symmetric and the relation uh, symmetric is if G is isomorphic with G1 then that implies G1 is isomorphic with G. That is a symmetric property. So this can be considered as if we define a mapping phi from G to G1, then that mapping is 1, 1 and R2. Then its inverse is also 1, 1 and R2. And also it is uh, satisfies the property of homomorphism. So therefore if G is uh, isomorphic with G1, then G1 is also isomorphic with G. And the third is transitive. Transitive property is if G is isomorphic with G1 and G1 is isomorphic with G2, then G is isomorphic with G2. So that is if first group is isomorphic with second and second is isomorphic with third, then the first is isomorphic with third group. So that is the relation. This can be defined as if we define uh, phi1 is a mapping between G to G1 and phi2 is a mapping between uh, G1 to G2, then phi2 composite phi1 will be a mapping between uh, G to G, G. And this mapping is again 1, 1 and onto because both phi1 and phi2 are 1, 1 and onto. And therefore this defines an isomorphism onto isomorphism between G and G2. Therefore G and G2 are isomorphic. So that means isomorphic groups is equivalence relation. So further we shall consider a corollary and this is also important. A homomorphism phi of G into G bar with kernel K phi is an isomorphism of G into G bar if and only if k phi is equal to e. So when a homomorphism becomes isomorphism, that is stated in the corollary. If a homomorphism, if a k phi is the kernel of homomorphism and k phi contains only identity elements and no other element, then that is 
isomorphism. Or in other way, if uh, uh, we have homomorphism and uh, with kernel K phi, then K phi is uh, containing only identity means this uh, homomorphism will become one to one, and therefore it is isomorphism. So we shall prove this uh, result. First, uh, there are uh, the condition is if and only. So first part we shall assume uh, it is an isomorphism. Phi is isomorphism with uh, from G into G bar with kernel K. Let phi from G into G bar be an isomorphism. Isomorphism with kernel K bar. This is our assumption. So what we have to prove? This k phi is equal to identity element. So we shall prove that. K phi is equal to this. And uh, now we will uh, suppose E and E bar with the identity elements of G and G bar. Let E and E bar. respectively, identity elements of uh, G and G bar uh, respectively. Now we shall suppose let X belongs to K phi, kernel of phi. Kernel of phi we have defined uh, earlier and kernel of phi uh, is denoted by this let letter K, capital K or K phi and it contains those elements whose image is the identity element in G bar. So therefore, phi of x is equal to E bar by definition of kernel. It is in K phi kernel means its image is E bar. And but uh, this implies phi of x is equal to. We know that. E is identity in G, then identity is mapped to identity, or image of identity is identity in G bar, and uh, thus uh, because E bar is equal to phi of E, and what this implies, so this implies phi of x is equal to phi of E. From this we can say phi is our assumption is phi is isomorphism, and therefore phi is one one. So this implies x is equal to E, since the reason is phi is 1 1 because phi is isomorphism every isomorphism is 1 to 1 map and thus what this shows if x belongs to k phi then that implies x is equal to e so therefore for every x belongs to k phi implies or we can say every x belongs to k phi implies x is equal to e. So x belongs to k phi implies x is equal to e. And that means uh, identity is the only element in kernel. So this shows that the only element in k phi is and that is kernel of phi contains only the identity elements. So this uh, proves the first part. Assuming phi is uh, homomorphism, uh, isomorphism, phi is isomorphism with kernel k phi, we have proved the kernel contains only identity elements. Now we shall consider the converse part. Conversely, we assume phi is homomorphism with kernel k phi and k phi is equal to e then we shall prove it is isomorphism. So this is our first part. Now we will consider the second part in the proof. Or this one is first. Now suppose C 
suppose uh, phi from g to g bar. be a homomorphism. Homomorphism is uh, given. with kernel k phi and k phi is equal to e or we may write with kernel k phi is equal to e so this is our assumption we are assumed phi is homomorphism and its kernel contains only identity element what we have proved uh, that this phi is isomorphism so we have to prove that phi is an isomorphism and when a homomorphism becomes isomorphism by definition if a homomorphism is one to one then it is isomorphism so that means we have to prove that phi is an isomorphism that is we have to prove that phi is a one to one so phi is one one matrix and phi is from g to g bar so to prove it is a 1 1 we shall consider two elements in g as x and y let x y belongs to g then property of 1 1 mapping property of 1 1 mapping what we have to assume is uh, or considering pi of x is equal to pi of y we have to prove x is equal to y then phi will be one to one mapping and that becomes uh, isomorphism because already it is homomorphism so this implies now we shall uh, post multiply by inverse of this uh, phi of y and that is phi of x into phi of y inverse of phi of y is equal to phi of y into inverse of phi of y and uh, the left side this is uh, phi of x what is inverse of phi of y we have lemma 13 that is phi of inverse of y so these two are equal and on the right side these are inverses of each other so therefore it is identity in remember this these are the elements in g bar so we have to write identity in g bar so this is e bar and thus uh, this implies phi of uh, x into phi of y inverse phi is a homomorphism we have supposed and therefore by multiplicative property this is phi of x into inverse of y and this is equal to e bar and now phi image of x into inverse of y is equal to e bar implies that this belongs to the kernel so this implies x into inverse of y belongs to the kernel but what is the kernel belongs to k kernel and here our assumption is uh, our kernel we have denoted by k phi and because our assumption is kernel contains only single element identity so therefore this must be equal to identity so this implies x into inverse of y is equal to e since k phi is equal to e only one element is there and now we uh, multiply post multiply by y so this will imply x is equal to y and thus starting with phi of x is equal to phi of y we have obtained x is equal to y this shows that phi is one to one and that is what we wanted to show we have to prove that phi is 1 1 if it is 1 1 homomorphism that is isomorphism and this proves the lemma so or we can say thus uh, phi is 1 1 and hence 
पाइस पाइस ओमा एंड दिस प्रूव्स द लेवर कॉरोलरी दिस प्रूव्स द कॉरोलरी सो इन अदर वे द मीनिंग इज ए मैपिंग और ए होमोमॉर्फिज्म बिकम्स वन वन if its kernel contains only identity element that is the meaning of this corollary now we shall see uh, an important theorem in homomorphism that is uh, known as fundamental theorem of group homomorphism we shall write the statement first that is fundamental theorem of group homomorphism and this is our theorem 4 in the serial order let phi be a homomorphism uh, from g on to g bar we have to consider Let phi be a homomorphism it is on to g bar then g by k is isomorphic with g bar so this is the statement of fundamental theorem of homomorphism phi is given as homomorphism from g on to g bar it is on to then these two groups are uh, we have this as a quotient group g by k is a quotient group we have defined earlier and this quotient group is uh, isomorphic with g bar where what is g bar g bar is the codomain of this homomorphism on to homomorphism so this we have to do now first we shall consider a diagram for this as consider the diagram see uh, g is this group and g bar is the mapping between g and g bar is phi and we now introduce uh, a mapping between these two sets groups it is a group and that mapping we denote by sigma so consider this uh, where this sigma of g is equal to sigma is from g to g by k so domain of sigma is uh, g element is considered as g and element of uh, g by k quotient group uh, the elements of quotient groups are all right cosets right cosets of k in g and therefore we should consider element in g by k as kg for all g belongs to g so this is our mapping we have uh, introduced here <coughs> now uh, we uh, again introduce a, uh, another mapping psi in this So introduce a mapping psi in this. As uh, again we shall show it in by figure g to g bar, and this is sigma g by k. Now this mapping we are introducing by psi, and. further the elements uh, of uh, we define the mappings like this we define these mappings as uh, by or as follows so suppose uh, g is the element in g and uh, its uh, image the mapping is phi between g and g bar only extra mapping we have considered or actually we want this 
we want to show uh, this uh, quotient group is isomorphic with g bar and therefore we must have a mapping between g by k to g bar and that we have defined uh, now as psi and now we denote the elements in this g and its uh, phi image we write as phi of g further this is sigma and its uh, element in g by k so we have here sigma is defined like this sigma of g is equal to kg and now the psi function is defined so what will be psi between these two elements psi of uh, kg is equal to phi of g so actually we will define the mapping psi now we define psi from g by k to g bar by psi of kg is equal to phi of g for all kg is in quotient group g by k and g belongs to g so this is our uh, mapping that we have defined now now what we have to show to prove this result g by k is isomorphic with g bar we have to prove this psi is onto isomorphism and onto isomorphism means it is 1 1 onto homomorphism that we have to prove. Now we shall prove the following. One by one these properties we shall prove. So we shall prove the following properties. following properties of psi first is psi is well defined it must be well defined this mapping is de well defined that we have to prove if it is not well defined then uh, we can't uh, uh, have a mapping between these two uh, groups so to show psi is well defined we have to consider two elements, equal elements in G by K. Let and two elements in G by K. So you remember uh, G by K is the quotient group and the quotient group contains all right process. This is actually the group which contains KG where G belongs to G. That is the set of right process is the group quotient group g by k set of right cosets of k in g and thus uh, two such type of elements we should have to consider let kg and kg dash belongs to g by k two elements we have considered like this first right coset second right coset and then we consider the equality between them kg equal to kg dash and then what we have to show a uh, well defined uh, property of mapping that uh, when we say f is uh, well defined if we have x is equal to y implies f of x is equal to f of y then the mapping f is said to be well defined so starting with kg is equal to kg dash what we have to show is psi of kg so this we have to show psi of kg is equal to psi of kg dash then this mapping becomes well defined and now kg is equal to kg dash this will imply g is equal to kg kg dash for some k because g is an element in kg and uh, why this is element in kg because we can write g as g is equal to eg and that belongs to kg e is identity so g can be expressed every element can be expressed in terms of identity so therefore g belongs to g is equal to eg and that belongs to uh, kg and this is an element of kg so g must be equal to kg dash that we have and this implies now we take its phi image so this uh, phi of g 
is equal to. So these are the elements in G. K is a subgroup of G uh, and therefore this is a kernel. K is a subgroup of G uh, with kernel K that uh, we have to mention in the statement of the theorem. So what we have uh, written the statement of the theorem that is I shall rewrite the theorem yeah theorem 4 let phi be a homomorphism let phi be a homomorphism from g on to g bar with kernel k I think I have forgotten this we have to write with kernel k then g by k is isomorphic with g bar so this is the correct statement of the theorem now, uh, now you see phi is a homomorphism of g on to g bar and k is the kernel so we take now phi image of on both side of this phi of g is equal to phi of k g dash because phi is homomorphism and that is phi is well defined phi is homomorphism and therefore uh, it is uh, well defined So uh, further this can be written as phi of g is equal to because it is homomorphism it uh, satisfies the multiplicative property and that is phi k phi g dash so the same reason it is a homomorphism and this implies phi of g is equal to what is phi of k k belongs to k here we have and therefore uh, this uh, phi of k if uh, k is in kernel its image is identity element in g bar so this is e bar e bar phi of g dash since k belongs to kernel by definition of kernel phi of k is equal to e bar and thus uh, this implies phi of g is equal to product with identity is again phi of g dash and now we use uh, the definition of uh, psi mapping psi of kg is equal to phi of g and that means phi of g is equal to psi of kg this is psi of kg and what is uh, phi of g dash phi of g dash will be psi of kg dash So thus uh, starting with kg is equal to kg dash we have proved psi of kg is equal to psi of uh, kg dash for any two elements and this shows that psi is well defined. Now the next condition we shall prove psi is on to. So I shall write here itself psi is on to. Now to prove psi is on to, we have to consider an element in its uh, codomain. See here psi is, uh, and we will consider uh, this is a G bar. We have the mapping defined uh, from G to G bar under phi and this is a G by K and this is psi, this is sigma. So we consider let X bar belongs to G bar. Then because X bar is in G bar, that X bar must have inverse image in G because phi is onto homomorphism that we have. It is onto. And therefore, every uh, x bar in g bar must have inverse image under phi, and that inverse image we shall consider as g. So this implies phi of g 
is equal to x for some g belongs to g since the reason is since pi is on to and further what this uh, implies this will imply that or instead of x you may consider element in g bar by x bar with this notation and then what is the uh, pi of g pi of g by definition is psi of kg so this implies psi of kg is equal to x bar and uh, by definition of psi and this proves this itself proves psi is on because considering the uh, image in g bar we have obtained the pre image of this x bar as kg so this uh, for every x bar or we can write like this for every x bar belongs to g bar there is there is kg belongs to g by k such that psi of kg is equal to x bar and the uh, psi is on to so second property we have proved now we shall prove that uh, psi is homomorphism that we shall prove that is the third property psi is homomorphism suppose two elements in uh, this g by k as x and y we have to uh, consider this psi from g by k to g we have to prove this is homomorphism so let two elements we shall write x and y belongs to g by k and every element in g by k is a right coset so therefore let or this implies x is equal to kg and y is equal to say kf for some g and f belongs to g so these are the elements and now to prove psi is homomorphism uh, what we have to prove is psi of x y multiplicative property psi of capital x into capital y now psi of x into y is equal to see what is the uh, x is kg and what is the uh, y is kf psi of kg into kf and this is equal to psi of k is normal subgroup of g that we have proved earlier lemma and for a normal subgroup the product of two right coset is a right coset and that product is written as kgf the reason is since k is normal normal subgroup of g or normal in g k is normal in g and therefore product of two right cosets is a right coset and what is the psi of uh, kgf by definition of psi psi of kg is pi of g and therefore psi of kgf will be pi of gf this will be pi of gf and because pi is onto homomorphism it is a homomorphism we shall uh, use the property of uh, multiplicative property of homomorphism this is by definition by definition of psi and this is pi of g into pi of f since pi is homomorphism and now what is pi of g again by the definition it is pi of g is psi of kg psi of kg and similarly this is psi of kf and thus this is psi of x kg is x we are shown and kf we are shown as y psi of y and starting with psi of uh, x y is Uh, we have proved it is equal to psi of x into psi of y and this is multiplicative property of homomorphism 
and the psi is homomorphism. Now what remains uh, to prove is that psi is 1 1. So uh, we have proved it is well defined on 2 and the homomorphism we have proved only it remains to prove psi is 1 1 and that we shall now consider. That is fourth property. Psi is 1 to 1. And to prove the uh, psi is 1 to 1, we shall prove that its kernel, it is a homomorphism. First we have proved it is a homomorphism for that purpose only. And when a homomorphism is uh, said to be 1 to 1, if its kernel contains only the identity element. This is the corollary that we have proved uh, earlier to this theorem. Now since psi is homomorphism or by 3, psi is a homomorphism. Now psi is 1 1 or psi will be isomorphism if the kernel of psi kernel of psi that is k phi uh, k psi we shall uh, say contains contains the identity element contains only the identity element element of g by k only the identity element of g by k then that mapping becomes 1 1 mapping by earlier corollary this is by corollary and now uh, what is uh, the identity element of g by k we will note it as the identity element or i shall write here but the identity element G by K is and this is a right coset set of right cosets and the identity element must be K is K E or which is same as K. So because K G into K E is equal to K G and that is equal to K G and therefore this is the identity element and this what we have to show identity element of G by K is K. That is, if so, therefore, we shall prove that if psi of uh, kg is equal to the identity element here, psi of kg is equal to uh, e bar, then kg is equal to this kg must be equal to k so this is what we have to do psi of uh, kg is equal to e bar then this uh, kg must be in the kernel and kernel is only uh, k that we have to prove now psi of uh, consider this psi of kg is equal to e bar but this implies what is the uh, psi of kg by definition psi of kg is equal to pi of g this implies pi of g is equal to and e bar is we know pi of e and this implies so pi of g is equal to again it is a e bar and uh, so therefore this uh, g must be in the kernel of pi so uh, instead of writing this as a uh, pi of uh, e I shall keep this as e bar. So this implies g belongs to kernel of phi. 
and what is kernel of pi we have in the theorem that is k so that is g belongs to k and if g belongs to k then we have kg is equal kg is also equal to k because of uh, k is subgroup and by the closure property g is in k and k is in k so therefore kg is equal to k since k is subgroup and thus uh, this is what we wanted to prove so assuming psi of kg is equal to e bar we have proved kg is equal to k and uh, that means the identity element of uh, g by uh, k is only k so this proves uh, psi is 1 1 hence psi is 1 1 and thus uh, now we collect all the parts together that uh, 1 to 4 from 1 to 3 and 4 we have psi is We have psi is 1 1 on to homomorphism. From G by A to G bar. G bar. From G by K to G bar. It is also on to. And thus it is uh, isomorphism onto isomorphism thus psi from g by k to g bar is an onto isomorphism and this proves these are isomorphic and hence g by k is isomorphic with g bar and this proves the theorem so thus we have proved the fundamental uh, theorem of uh, group homomorphism where uh, we have defined a mapping psi from g by k to g bar and we have shown uh, the four properties of that mapping 1 1 on 2 and homomorphism and thus uh, the two groups becomes isomorphic to each other so remain part we will continue next time thank you